Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on this channel. Today we have a very cool video because we have ZBrush for iPad. A new update was released last week and they introduced one of my favorite tools, which is of course C Modeler. So let's get to it. Now I'm releasing this video so that everyone can of course understand and use this new tool, C Modeler. But if you're new to ZBrush for iPad, we do have a full course that's gonna be linked here in the description where I explain a lot of the tools and the pipelines that you can use to create your own digital sculpts. With that said, let's go to the update. So let's get a couple of things out of the way before we start with C Modeler, okay? First of all, when we're starting a new sculpt here inside of ZBrush, remember that you can go not to the 3D meshes, but to the primitives instead, and modify a couple of the components or the elements from the object so that it's easier to manipulate Manipulate the edges, the vertices, on all the different things, right? So if you click on this guy and then we go all the way to the bottom part right here in the tool palette, we're gonna have this initialized property. And the initialized property, well, there we go. Let me just out of the way. I'm gonna turn on polyframe so that we can see what's going on. And on the initialized property, you're gonna see that we can align the cylinder to different directions. For instance, I'm gonna start with a Y alignment right there. We can change the size, we can change the scales on the X, Y, and Z, the inner radius, right? Like we want to have a, an open, like a open-ended element right there. But more, most importantly, I would say are this H divide and a V divide. So for instance, on the H divide, I'm actually going to lower this all the way to something like 20, which is a little bit closer to what we would normally get in softwares like Maya or Blender, right? There we go. And then on the V divide, I'm also going to bring them down to, in this case, a six or seven. Let's go actually uh, nine. There we go. Why nine? It's a little bit weird, actually, because I would expect the V divide to be counting the like inner sections, but it seems to be using a different side, side, like sort of counter or something. So in this case, we have three divisions on the top and three divisions on the bottom. Once we're happy with this, very important. When you're using 3D primitives, you need to go to the subtool palette and press this button that says make poly mesh. 3D, okay? Super, super important. Otherwise, you're not going to have access to all of the different tools that we have here inside of uh, ZBrush. And this works both for the desktop version and for the uh, iPad version. Now, a little side note here. Remember how during the course, I always complain about the little wheel and how my thumbs were <laughs> super big and I was like pressing or having a hard time pressing all of the different buttons? I actually made a little bit of, uh, of a sidestep here and I'm using this little thing right here. This is not like a paid promo or anything, uh, but you saw me review this a couple of months ago with the Canvas 22 tablet that I normally use to work. But this one is the Huion Key Dial Mini. You can pretty much use a keyboard, like a Bluetooth keyboard, but I find this one pretty practical. And when I did this, I changed these buttons so that one of them is Alt, one of them is Shift, one of them is a Spacebar, one of them is Control-C, and that way I don't have to be pressing the elements on the screen. So let me show you. So right now I'm only using my left hand or my right hand with my pen, and if I press uh, this big button right here, that's my shift button, right, to, to mask things off. This one is my shift to smooth things out. This one is my alt to invert the selection. This one's the space bar to change, you know, draw size, focal shift, all that stuff. And it's very convenient because I can press all of the buttons at the same time. This only really works if you're like on a table or on a surface where you can have the tablet and the little key dial. But I just wanted to add that as a little side note right there. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna do our first element right here. We're gonna do, of course, a very nice barrel. So I'm gonna start with this a little thing right here. I'm using my scale button to scale this up. And now we can actually jump to the C modeler brush so that I can explain how this works. It's very simple, guys. If you've done any sort of like a poly modeling thing in the past, again, Blender, Maya, any other software, you're gonna know how this works. So we're gonna go here to C modeler. And what we're gonna get is this little icons here on the side all of these guys right here. And what this does is it allows us to select what action we wanna do on a polygon, on an edge, and on a point or in a vertex. They will be divided, they will be color coded, which by the way, I love because this is very similar, or it's a lot more intuitive than what we have on the desktop version, but we can utilize all of this to modify well, different elements. So for instance, let's say I wanna select the inner edge because we wanna do a barrel and we wanna give this a little bit of curvature. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to edges here and I'm not gonna go to the model actions, I'm actually gonna go to the selection actions like this one. So I'm gonna go mask, and I can do edge loop complete. There we go. So now if I hover my mouse on top of this edge right here and click, that edge got masked out. It will look a little bit weird. This is normal. What's happening here is we are actually masking the inside, but it needs to draw the mask all the way to the next edge, okay? So if I press here, control any bird, you can see that this thing is like working as expected. So now I can go again to my, for instance, uh, scale tool right here and just scale that edge loop only. And as you can see, only that edge loop is being scaled on that particular area. C Modeler works a lot with masks, so you definitely want to get comfortable with it because you will be masking a lot of things. 
So for instance, let's say I want to mask the next elements right here. I'm going to do that and that, and then I'm going to control and tap to invert. And you can see I've now selected those two right there. So you can traditionally mask like I just did right here by dragging and dropping on top of the specific points, or you can go to the modeler tabs or the, to the C modeler elements to modify those points as well. Let me mask this one and this one, invert the mask. And again, I'm just going to scale this up a little bit more right there. There we go. I feel now that the center point might be a little bit too much. So let's bring it in a little bit. So we get this nice, interesting shape for our barrel. Okay, so simple stuff, right? But that's not all. Let's go to the real magic. One quick thing right here, I actually created a new costume bar right here. So this one over here with a couple of the brushes that we touched upon in the, um, in the course, like the ore brushes that we downloaded. And of course, there's the scene modeler right there. So if you're in your main interface and you just like scroll to the other side, it's going to be right here. So I can go to scene modeler. And now what I want to do is I want to start creating a couple of poly groups to have a little bit more control over what we're seeing right here. Okay, so let's do the following. I'm going to use my control selection tool to select the caps of the element. See those? Both those of those caps. And then if I go to the menu, we can go, remember, to polygroups and say group visible. So right over here, we're going to create group visible. So now our barrel has two polygroups, one on the caps and one on the main uh, body of the barrel. What I can do now is, again, go to my elements, and I'm going to go to the faces mode, and I want to do an inset. Now, whenever you select any of the tools that we have right here, we're going to have options over on this side that are going to allow us to select what specific area we want to do. So, for instance, if I use inset and I go to this triangle, you can see I'm going to be inserting only that triangle right there, which, I mean, could work for potentially like some elements, but in this case, we want to do everything. So I need to go over here, and I need to select not all polygons, because if we do all polygons, what's going to happen? is every single polygon on the on the element is going to be inserted we need to go all the way down here and go to polygroup okay that's why polygroups are so so important so i'm going to say polygroup all why polygroup all because i want both polygroups the ones that are on the bottom and on the top to be affected by this thing so i'm going to click and there we go look at that we can very quickly create a little bit of an inset there for our element and it should be working in the exact same way on the bottom part of our barrel which is exactly what we want right let me change the material because this is definitely making it a little bit difficult to see there we go. That's much better, right? So as you can see, we have this very nice inset done on both of the polygroups. And when we did that tool, as you can see, one very important thing is that we automatically get a new polygroup on that specific element. This is important because, for instance, if we were to do, let's say, a bevel, right? Let's say we want to do a bevel. So we're going to go edges and we're going to go up here. We're going to select the bevel option. I'm going to do edge loop complete, right? And if I do that right here, a new polygroup is being created on that bevel, allowing me to have more control over that specific area. While drawing this, you can press Alt. Was it Alt? Oh, that's actually, that's actually a feature. That's a feature that we have in the in the desktop version. But in the desktop version, if you draw and you press Alt, you can actually change the polygroup. It doesn't seem to be active on this one. But here's a cool thing. Let's say we do the bevel and we like it. We like that specific bevel that we have right there. How can I assure that the bevel on the on the other or the bottom part right here is going to be the same? Very simple. You just tap. When you do a tool, especially here within Simodeler, if you just tap the tool on another section on another area of your element, it will sort of like import the exact same settings, in this case, the bevel distance that we have on the bottom, which again, makes it very, very handy. I'm going to go over here. Q mesh is another like super common thing that we do here with Simodeler. And I'm going to go, let's say, to... I'm going to go and do polygroup island right here, okay? In QMesh, what QMesh does is it allows me to push, as you can see, it's kind of like an extrusion, like a smart extrusion that allows me to push and generate this volume right here. And again, if I did not do it on both polygroups at the same time, I just need to click and it'll all automatically get me the exact same depth and the exact same element on both sides. As you can imagine, guys, and you remember chapter two from the from the series, right, from the course, when we were doing the chest, we were doing a lot of like hacky ways of just sculpting every single thing, like all of the blocks and all of the planks. Well, this is a more sort of like control way to do it. It does require understanding some of these tools where, which we're going over, but it's, it's relatively simple, I would say, and it's a really, really, really practical tool. I'm going to do a small bevel right there. Just click on that one as well, and then click on this one. Oh, careful there this one and this one. A tip that I give my students all the time is when we're using C modeler, bring your draw distance all the way down to one so that you're only affecting exactly what you're clicking. Okay. So there we go. So now, as you can see, we got this very nice sort of like interesting looking shape for our barrel. And here's one of the cool things. We can actually go into our geometry options and remember the dynamics of the vision, 
like parameters that we can have, we can actually see how this thing is going to look as a smoother version of the element without the need to actually subdivide it. So all of the tools that we have access to within CBrush are still active right now. We can still work with them. The only one that, of course, we cannot do at this particular moment is Dynamesh because it's going to break all of this very nice clean geometry that we have right here. Now, let's take a look at some other tools. I'm going to go to the edge options and I'm going to go to the insert edge loop, which again, very, very common one, right? So insert edge loop allows me to insert an edge loop right there. Uh, there's nothing you can do here except for control. If you use control, you can snap this to half of the distance of the element, but that's about it. Now, if you want to have a little bit more control over the insert edge loop, we can go here to the modifiers. Okay, as you can see, the snap right now is set to half. You can change it to quarter, or you can uh, set it to a custom value. And one very cool thing is, if we change this to multiple edge loops, we have this option called Resolution Interactive. You can specify a custom amount of like edge loops. So if you want edge, edge, eight edge loops, there you go. You got eight edge loops right there very quickly. But I really like the interactive one because what we can do here is click on the edge loop and then drag up and down to decide how many of this you want, okay? Again, very valuable, right? Because for instance, right there, I really like that purple element as sort of one of those, um, let's say the, the metal bands that we might have, right? So actually, let me control C, let's have it up here. So there we go, that seems like a good like metal band right there. There we go, another one right there. And in here, I'm just gonna add one and one right there, okay? So cool, I mean, it's looking okay, but we can definitely clean this up a little bit more. How am I gonna clean this? Well, first of all, I'm gonna use my um, selection tool again. We're gonna select all of these elements. Let's deselect, Control, Shift, Alt, and all that stuff. Deselect those elements, there we go. I am gonna go to my polygroup options, or sorry, visibility, I'm gonna grow this. One time, yeah, shrink. So that right there, that's what I want. And once I have that, I am going to, again, go to Polygroups and Group Visible, okay? Now, I can go back to my C modeler, and if I go to Faces, for instance, there's a very nice function that we have here to polygroup specific like elements. So if we go all the way to here to Selection, I can polygroup, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a poly loop. So I wanna do that one right there, oh, that one right there. I wanna do this one right here, this one right here, this one right here, this one right here, and that one right there. See that? So again, imagine those are gonna be like the metal bands that we wanna have. So there we go. Again, once we go out, we're gonna have all of the different polygroups that we're gonna be able to control. Here, once more, we can go to, let's say, face mode, use something like QMesh, polygroup all, so that we can polygroup or extrude all of those edges right there. Okay, not bad, right? Not freaking bad. Now, there's other things that we can do, and this is something that I don't remember if we touched upon during the, the actual course, which are creases. Creases are a way to keep very, very tight edges on some geometries, and in this particular example, it might work just fine, because again, if we go right now to, let's say, geometry and dynamic subdivision, you're gonna see that the barrels, especially all of those bands, look very, very soft, and that's not exactly what we want, right? So what I can do here, let's turn that off, is I can go again to my tools, and there's a tool for edges, which is specifically the crease. This one right here, crease. And as you can see, we can do edge loop complete. So I'm gonna crease that edge right there. I'm gonna crease this edge right here. I'm gonna crease the one on the inside, that one, and all of the other ones. And now if I go to dynamic subdivision again, one of the things that you're gonna see is that we get this very nice sharp corner there on the metal bands. Ideally, of course, we wanna go into the inner section as well. So all of those edges, and it might be a little bit difficult to see right now because of the resolution of the screen, but if you're working on your iPad, you're gonna see something um, very, very simple there, which is the, like a little sort of like dotted line going around the elements. The only reason why I, I don't personally like uh, creases all the time is because sometimes when you export this to other softwares, they don't really sort of like read those creases properly and you're not gonna get the same result. That's why most of the time when I'm doing like hard surface things, you're gonna see me do other things such as uh, just adding support edges or beveling the elements. But here, if we're staying within ZBrush, it's totally, totally fine. And look at that. So now we got this very, very nice like barrel with a very, very nice intense like sharp effect on the, on the actual elements. For instance, if we wanna delete some of the edges that we have there, we can go to the edge mode again go to topology and I'm gonna go here, delete. Again, edge loop complete, and we click on that one, there we go. We can collapse things, we can merge elements, 
it, I, I know it might not seem like much, my friends, but believe me, being able to literally poly model stuff here inside of Seabirds for iPad is a big thing. It's one of those things that I, I only dreamed of a couple of years ago, but thinking that, for instance, you could do it on your phone, right? And now we can actually do it. I'm going to go here to the edges and I actually do want to insert a couple of edges here. Oh, there we go. Oh, let's go edges. And again, let's go back to single edge look. I'm going to snap to half. And the reason why I want to add a couple of edge loops right there is because if we subdivide this thing, remember guys, especially if you're not using Dynamesh, when you subdivide this thing so that we can add more detail, you need to make sure that the proportions of your squares are as uniform as possible. Otherwise, the detail that we're going to be adding might not be possible. So that's it, my friends. I know this was a very, very short video, but I just wanted to introduce to you the very basics of a C modeler. How many things can you do with this? Pretty much anything you can imagine. You can model a full, complete car, a Gundam robot, you can do weapons, you can do as many things as you want, but of course, you are gonna need to have the fundamentals of, let's say, traditional poly modeling. Now, we have plenty of videos about that here in the channel, so feel free to search for a couple of those and see how we handle certain things so that you can just translate those into ZBrush with now all of this C modeler tools. Remember, if you're just watching this video and you are not part of the uh, full course, uh, make sure to check the site as well. We have all of the tools available for ZBrush for iPad, and I will be updating the course as with this video as more and more tools are released because, of course, it's important to keep ourselves updated. If we see really, really big changes, then we might need to do another course or something like that, but we'll see when that happens. Okay, my friends, that's pretty much it. Thank you for being part of this community, for helping us grow. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you very, very soon for our live stream. I'll see you back on the next one. And don't forget, always learning, always improving. Bye-bye, guys.